Okay guys, it's uh, September the 20th. It's coming up on 4.30 in the evening. And the camera's been dead, but still been working on this uh, Ingersoll Rand tidying up a few things. I did go ahead and pull the uh, pump there, and it was exactly what we thought. Just a bunch of oil that over the years where I had changed the oil had run back. That's what I found there. And I'll go ahead and uh, include a picture of that. I've also got the back of the uh, tank area all cleaned up. I had mentioned to you earlier that I had went ahead and uh, replaced the ball valve. So hopefully we're good on that. And then I had had a leak for several months right here at this fitting and went ahead and redid all that took it out and cleaned the old ceiling out and put new pipe thread ceiling in and there was a few of the threads that was missing down next to the bottom whenever they cut that it wasn't really rusty but it, it kind of worries me a little bit but it, it tightened up fine so maybe it's okay something else that I've done so I got all this cleaned up and when I first got this I couldn't really fit a connector on here so what I wind up doing is just taking a Dremel tool and opening the opening up just a little bit to where it would fit a three-quarter connector and I don't know what you call these things I always call them a Romex connector this is like a number eight gauge cord that I've used here which is probably a little bit o overkill. It's pretty tight in here. They don't give you a lot of room on these things anyway. But I've got it all situated now to where the cover will go on it. And we should be in good shape. So I've got the pump up here in the shop area. And went ahead and I've, I've drained the oil out of it. The oil that came out of it is actually pretty clean. But the only difference that I can see between this oil and the new oil is this oil is a little thinner. So I guess that's the way it wears, I guess. But I've also included this uh, little brass nipple here with a 90 and a pipe plug there. And I believe that's going to help me change the oil on it without getting all that run back, back underneath the compressor. Okay guys, in the process of putting this IR back together. But while I'm doing that, it's been a couple days since I finished this airline up. And I haven't really pressurized the system yet. So I thought I'd go ahead and pressurize it. And let it come up to pressure. I'm roughly right at 140 in the tank of the Quincy right now. And I'm just going to go ahead and pressurize it with what's in the tank. I'm going to leave the valve going upstairs off and I'm also going to leave the valve going over to the garage off. So we'll see how this goes. Okay guys, we'll go ahead and put a little pressure on it. Move it. I'm going to stand back. So I believe what popped was the bottom of this and now I'm actually putting pressure on the system. Right there's 130. I'm going to open this valve here and we'll pressurize the rest of it. Alright YouTube, I'm going to soap it up and uh, we'll watch it. Okay guys, we'll continue to watch it. I've got the soap bubbles on it and uh, 
we'll continue just to look at it and keep a close watch on it while I'm putting this IR back together. I've got the gauge. I bled a little bit of the pressure off and I've got it sitting at 135. So that'll be a good indicator for us. I still haven't pressurized this little section here that's going over to the garage. And uh, I'm not going to do that just yet because I want to I want to wait and keep an eye on this gauge for a while before I do that cuz it still could be something in the garage that may may be leaking down or something and uh, so I'd like to just keep a watch on that gauge for a little while before I pressurize this I'll make a little bit more progress I'll bring you back I'm gonna go ahead and get this IR put back together and get it set back in place I believe we'll be back okay guys I do have one small leak been down here working on the IR for a couple hours and I did notice it losing a pound or two here and there and uh, so I re-soaked everything again and right there at that valve it's it's leaking right right here it's real small and I think I'm just gonna hold off on it just a little bit and keep a watch on it it may it may lock up on its own but everything else seems to be doing okay I've closed the valve here and it's sitting at 130 so we'll keep an eye on it and uh, just see how bad it is like I said it may lock up on its own I really hate to turn that anymore because it's gonna it's gonna turn this down as soon as I try to tighten up on it and I, I didn't want, really want to move all that so we'll see what happens we'll keep a watch on it okay guys I've got my IR mounted back and I didn't use the the newer pads right there like I did on the Quincy and the reason being after I got to looking at it this compressor is a lot taller and I don't really have a lot of clearance here between the uh, ceiling it might be about seven eight inches or so and um, I was a little worried about that getting hot so I decided just to go ahead and use those thin ones that's the way it was before and so I just kind of put it back like it was and get ready to fire it up and uh, I'm gonna do like we did on the Quincy I'm gonna time it Alright, now this compressor kicks off at 135 and it kicks in at 90. Okay, YouTube, that is right at 135. And it's uh, 6 minutes and 43 seconds. And this is the Ingersoll Rand SS5. I'm filling up an 80 gallon tank. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some soap bubbles up there and around my valve. And I want to just make sure that... Uh, everything's okay there okay guys got my hydraulic hose on the IR coming into the system and I did go ahead and uh, pressurize the line to the garage and tested these filters out at first this Wilkerson leaked a little bit right there at the bottom but it finally sealed and uh, so far I don't really see any hissers or nothing. I will test this hydraulic line tomorrow once the uh, thread sealant locks up on it. But anyway, I went to pressurize that garage lead and it I had this valve off. And when it did, this thing started bleeding down. I didn't know what was going on. 
I thought something was getting ready to blow up. I was getting ready to head for the door. I was able to get another turn on this. I was able just to take take it and turn it one more time. And uh, so it did seal it. Well guys, that's going to do it for this video. We'll call this part two of the compressor install. I believe the IR is actually running a lot quieter now. So it was really due to that oil change. And right now I've got the, the line pressurized at 100 PSI. And I've got this uh, IR, it's pressurized at 125. So we'll see how that does overnight. And tomorrow I'll be back down here and I'll, I'll check everything. And, and I'll keep checking it for leaks and everything while I'm cleaning up. i got a mess to clean up down here. I've got one more update to do. And we'll be doing that to the Quincy. But I've got to order some parts and everything. And then we'll put this project to wrap. And we'll get back to working in the garage. Like I said, really happy with the way this has turned out. And I hope it, I hope it works really good. I hope this is the end of my air troubles. I believe it hopefully will be. And I'm going to try to do a better job at maintaining these filters here. So appreciate everybody following the channel. And appreciate all my subscribers. And when I have some more progress, I'll be back online. Thank you guys.